So now we've got ourselves acquainted with the basics of the layers and channel system, we're going to take a look at a few more uh, layers within the uh, within the context of the of the system. And because of that, we've I've I've loaded in an EXR file. So let's just uh, get rid of uh, get rid of some of this stuff and reinstate our original view back in the RGBA channel in the RGBA layer and back in the RGB channel. So when we move on we just need to examine the relationship between these layers and the viewer. Essentially whichever layer you choose from the layers panel it gets loaded into the channels of the viewer. So So this is a list of any channels that are available and relate directly to the uh, to the layer that's actually loaded on into this side of the viewer. So I kind of touched on this before, but if we put the reflection pass into this side, then we know that this is the red, this is the green, this is the blue, and this is the alpha channel of that particular layer. So you can see there's nothing in the alpha channel. So we know this is a red, green and blue image and not a red, green, blue and alpha. So I'll set that back. And again, if we look at the specular, then again we're looking at the red channel of the specular layer, the green channel of the specular layer, the blue channel of the specular layer. Again, there's no data in the alpha channel. But if we go back to the RGBA, we can see that there is an alpha channel. But again, we're looking at the red, green and blue data. You can see the blue data is very very dark. And we'll set that back to RGB. Now what about this middle drop down? This list determines which channel will appear in the alpha channel of the viewer. So note that it's currently displaying RGB alpha this is because it identified the image as having four channels when it was read in and therefore it assumes the fourth channel is the is the alpha channel and it populates it accordingly so let me set the channel view to A and there we can see the alpha channel however you can actually put any channel from any layer into the alpha channel of the viewer so just to show you what I mean by that you can see all the channels from the layers list and we can put any of these into the into the RGBA of the viewer or the alpha channel of the viewer. So for example we can choose the masks shadow and we can actually drop that into the alpha channel of the viewer. We could put the blue channel of the reflection layer in and this is now occupying the alpha channel of the viewer. And if I go back to RGB you can see that we can do this without it having any effect whatsoever on the RGB channels. So now we can still look at the red as normal, we can look at the green as normal, the blue as normal, but this time we get a slightly different view when we go into the alpha channel because we've populated it with a different channel. So let me quickly pop this back, I'll set that back to RGB alpha and I'll set that back to RGB. Okay, so how are these layers created and how did they get there? Well essentially there are two ways. The first we've already seen, they're essentially predefined. They come in with the EXR image. So essentially they've been defined within the CGI program. And the second way is that we can actually create and name them ourselves. And this is effectively done using nodes from the channel tab on the toolbar. And if I just click on the channel tab of the toolbar you can see that there are six principal nodes within this uh, within this tab and these are the six nodes that allow us to manage create and edit all of your channels in the layer uh, which contains an, a number of uh, additional channels that we can take a look at so this is a uh, this is a model that's been rendered out of a uh, out of a 3d program in the OpenEXR format with a number of channels uh, that have been split out that we can access separately and if we take a look at the layers system you can see that we've already got we can already see a difference here we can see that there's an alpha channel we can see that there, uh, sorry an alpha layer there's a masks layer there's a reflection layer a specular layer so there's already some some layers in here that we didn't have access to previously so let me start by selecting the reflection layer 
Now this already looks a little bit different. We can see only the reflection information now in the file. And if again, if we flick between the red, the green, and the blue, we can already see that not only is this layer showing us just a particular part of the render, but it's actually, we, we know that this layer also has its own red, green, and blue channel data. I'll put that back to RGB. If I select the specular, again, we see the same thing. We're seeing only the specular highlights, but again, we can look at the red, the green, and the blue channels of those specular highlights. And again, I'll just set this back to RGB. In fact, I'll set that back to RGBA as well, so we're kind of back to our original position. Now, one thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you a really important layer that's going to enable us to see all these um, all these layers and channels in unison, and it's called the Layer Contact Sheet. So I'm just going to put my I'm just going to select the Read node, and I'm just going to bring out the Layer Contact Sheet. Now, this is a really interesting uh, node. Uh, just note that it's got a, an option here to show the layer names, and I'm just going to select those because it's actually, it's actually going to tell us a little bit more about the uh, about the individual passes that are that are available to us here. So I'm just going to come in a little bit, and we'll move around it. Now, the first thing that we can see about this image is that it's it's a four-channel image. It's a red, green, blue, and alpha image, and there's a few ways that we can tell that. First of all, if we actually come into the uh, to the node, we can see here on the read node that it's displaying a red, a green, a blue, and a white bar across its node. And what that's telling us is that it's containing red, green, blue, and an alpha channel. So that's one indicator that, uh, that this is a blue channel. But we can also use the contact sheet to look through the individual channels of this, uh, of this image. So for example, if we just, uh, if we just uh, choose the red channel, we can see that this is the red channel of the various passes. So we can see the masks, and we'll come back to that in a second. Uh, we can see this is the red channel of the reflection of the red, green, blue, and alpha, and of the specular. Similarly, the green and the blue. So we can see that there's channel data in every one of those uh, in, where in every one of those images. However, if we go to the alpha channel, they all go black except this one. And what that essentially means is that these are all three channel three channel images, whereas this one has a fourth channel, this one has the alpha channel. So again we'll quickly whip that back to RGB and that's the advantage of the of the layer contact sheet. It allows us, it's a cross referencing tool, it allows us to reference the passes within the image very quickly and, uh, and we can just leave it in situ and just hit D to hide it when we don't need to see it and then bring it back to life when we do. So I said I would come back to that interesting looking masks layer. I'm just going to flick the viewer layer system onto this so we can see it, uh, see it a little bit bigger. And this is an interesting layer. It's actually made up of several arbitrary channels. And to demonstrate this, if we flick to the red channel, we already saw this, we can see that this is a single channel grunge pass. And when we say single channel, we mean grayscale. Similarly, if we switch to the green channel, we can see that this is providing us with a single channel occlusion pass. And again, the blue channel, a sing again, a single channel shadow pass. So effectively, these these passes have been put into this uh, to this layer, but we'd, we'd expect to see red, green, and blue data in here. But instead of that, the can the system is actually just using these as a repository to place these individual channels of data. And if I just set this back to RGB and put the layer system back to RGBA, um, the advantage of this system is that any layer anywhere in the script will be able to use any of those masks and, and as many times as they want without having to run a connection to them and essentially that is the whole point. So to help you visualize the layers and channels and as they configure within the script let's look at this illustration. This is effectively an overview of the layers and channels within this script. You can see at the front there that we've got four channels in this layer. We've got the red, green, and we've got the RGBA red, the RGBA green, the RGBA blue, and the RGBA alpha. Then we have a three-channel image, which is the specular pass, 
where we just have red, green and blue data. And similarly the reflection pass, we just have red, green and blue data. And then at the back here we have this masks pass, which has basically been populated with these separate layers of information that are all single channel grayscale images. And you can define as many layers and channels as you want until you've filled up your 1024 available channels within the script. So this is a very flexible system. So let's just uh, get, rid of, uh, get rid of some of this stuff and reinstate our original view. Back in the RGBA channel, in the RGBA layer and back in the RGB channel. So when we move on, we just need to examine the relationship between these layers and the viewer. Essentially, whichever layer you choose from the layers panel, it gets loaded into the channels of the viewer. So this is a list of any channels that are available and relate directly to the, uh, to the layer that's actually loaded on into this side of the viewer. So I kind of touched on this before, but if we put the reflection pass into this side, then we know that this is the red, this is the green, this is the blue, and this is the alpha channel of that particular layer. So you can see there's nothing in the alpha channel. So we know this is a red, green, and blue image and not a red, green, blue, and alpha. So I'll set that back. And again, if we look at the specular, then again, we're looking at the red channel of the specular layer, the green channel of the specular layer, the blue channel of the specular layer. Again, there's no data in the alpha channel. But if we go back to the RGBA, we can see that there is an alpha channel. But again, we're looking at the red, green, and blue data. You can see the blue data is very, very dark. And we'll set that back to RGB. Now, what about this middle drop down? This list determines which channel will appear in the alpha channel of the viewer. So note that it's currently displaying RGB alpha. This is because it identified the image as having four channels when it was read in, and therefore it assumes the fourth channel is the, is the alpha channel, and it populates it accordingly. So let me set the channel view to A, and there we can see the alpha channel. However, you can actually put any channel from any layer into the alpha channel of the viewer. So just to show you what I mean by that, you can see all the channels from the layers list and we can put any of these into the into the RGBA of the viewer or the alpha channel of the viewer. So for example, we can choose the masks shadow and we can actually drop that into the alpha channel of the viewer. We could put the blue channel of the reflection layer in and this is now occupying the alpha channel of the viewer. And if I go back to RGB you can see that we can do this without it having any effect whatsoever on the RGB channels. So now we can still look at the red as normal, we can look at the green as normal, the blue as normal, but this time we get a slightly different view when we go into the alpha channel because we've populated it with a different channel. So let me quickly pop this back, I'll set that back to RGB alpha and I'll set that back to RGB. Okay, so how are these layers created and how did they get there? Well, essentially, there are two ways. The first we've already seen, they're essentially predefined. They come in with the EXR image. So essentially, they've been defined within the CGI program. And the second way is that we can actually create and name them ourselves. And this is effectively done using nodes from the channel tab on the toolbar. And if I just click on the channel tab of the toolbar, you can see that there are six principal nodes within this, uh, within this tab. And these are the six nodes that allow us to manage, create, and edit all of your channels in the layer. 